Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back. So today I'm doing a review of the JVC GRC1U. This is a camera that was released back in 1984 and it might look familiar to you because this is the camera that was used in the Back to the Future movies. So I'm pretty excited for this. Just remember, this is not a digital camera. This is a camera that takes mini VHS tapes. So uh, yeah, let's get right into the review. So let's get this review started. Here I have the original case and you can see here it says video movie. It's a big case, it's heavy. But let's open it up and see what's inside. So here we have the camera itself, the GRC1U. We have a battery charger, a viewfinder that is removable. You have to connect that yourself. We also have some audio visual cables, some extra batteries. I missed something? and um, another connector here for older TVs. So this camera was the first VHS-C camera. So it took these mini VHS tapes. So what I wanna do is review all the different features that this camera had, show you some test shots so you have a better idea on what this camera is capable of at that time period. Remember, 1984. This is an old camera and I'm really happy I was able to find one in working condition at a semi-decent price, 200 bucks. And then I'll also kind of show you how you can get footage from a VHS type camera like this onto your computer so that you can do some editing. And I did do a vlog with this. I thought it was gonna be a really big challenge to do, but I found it to be really interesting and a lot of fun to do. And if you wanna check out that vlog, I'll have it linked right up there. And I also did like a little podcast talking about uh, filming back in you know the day with using cameras like this and also mini DV cameras um, and just what I've been up to when I was a lot younger but anyway let's continue on with this review so before we get into all the awesome features of this camera what I want to do is just quickly talk about the different accessories that this camera came with so I thought this was the most interesting thing here back in the day older TVs didn't have the composite audio visual inputs so you'd be stuck using something like this the quality Quality wasn't as great but you were still able to view certain things sort of like this on your TV so uh, if you remember this video game system say a Nintendo you'd have to put it to like channel 3 or channel 2 to even start uh, you know or to even play your video game you didn't go to inputs or anything like that uh, so of course we have a battery here what was interesting with this whole setup it came with three batteries two of them don't work which was noted in the post when I bought it and then this was the third battery that does work and supposedly it was rebuilt or something but it works i've charged it a few times now and everything's working so far uh so the viewfinder it's removable i guess uh, you could save space in the case if you wanted to makes it a little bit more portable pretty easy to connect not really too hard you have these little slide bars and then you have a connection that you could plug right into the camera which i'll show you later and another thing here is just the battery charger. What's interesting is you plug it in, you put the battery in, and then you have a switch that you would flip on and then it'll begin charging. Let me just quickly talk about some other accessories that you could buy for this camera. Another thing you could get was a battery pack similar to this, but you wouldn't be, it's not made to charge a battery. You can plug directly into the camera and run it off that. So from the wall or even from a cigarette lighter in your car. Another thing you could get was a character generator. So you could connect that to the camera and superimpose words like happy birthday or a date and it'll show on the camera, on the tape, on the recording. So yeah, let's talk more about this amazing camera. This is the GRC1U. Now the U meaning that it's an NTSC format. If you had the GRC1E, that's a PAL format. Now another interesting thing, like this was a, a, a worldwide release so if you actually bought this in Japan, it was called a Victor. So in Japan, that's the actual company name, it's called Victor. Now another thing they did, they relicensed, I guess, this design or this idea to another company called Telefunken. And um, they re-released the camera. Um, it looked exactly the same, but it was in black format. But I kind of really like the design of this and the color scheme. Now here we have the viewfinder. Like I said, it is removable. Interesting thing here is that it says December 1984. So uh, what I'm gonna do is get this connected. Now why I say this is an interesting thing is because 
what you were able to do was preview your shot prior to recording. So apparently that wasn't a big thing that was possible. If you hit record, then you were able to preview what you're actually recording. Uh, but with this, you can set up your shots prior and know exactly what the scene looks like. And that also allowed you to do some white balance adjustments and uh, light sensitivity settings. So we'll get into that a little bit later. Now, the other thing that made this viewfinder amazing and awesome was because not only could you preview your shots, but then after you record your shot, you can go back and rewatch what you recorded. Apparently that was like so revolu revolutionary at that time. You didn't have to connect the cables to the TV or take the tape out and watch it. You could watch it right from the camera itself. You know, we didn't have LCD screens or anything. You literally have to stick your eye in here and look and see what you captured. You couldn't hear any sound unless you plugged in some earphones. You do have an earphone jack. And the other interesting thing is the uh, viewfinder in here is black and white. It does capture color, but when you're looking through the viewfinder, uh, it's all in black and white. And the other thing is, is the resolution on it is so bad, it's so hard to tell if things are in focus. And uh, the funny thing is, is that it's not autofocus, obviously, it's a manual focus. You can zoom with it and uh, do the manual focus. But the way that the manual described to focus things was is to zoom in on the object that you want to capture, then focus it, and then zoom back out. And now that person or that object you're capturing should now be in focus. Another interesting thing is the microphone here is removable. It would be interesting to see if I could stick one of my mics on there. Uh, it's, you know, standard mic jack, so should be able to work. So what I wanna do next is get the battery pack attached to make sure I got it in right. Um, so we'll do that. I wanna show you what the boot up time is like, because it's not like you have this idea and you wanna capture something so quick. Now we have smartphones. You could turn them on and instantly start recording within a few seconds. So something like this, um, you need some time, some prep prep time before you could actually begin recording. So let me show you what that process is like. So on here, we have a power button, this orange button here. I'm gonna turn that on. So the camera is is on, but if I look in the viewfinder, I don't see anything. I, I can't see anything at all, it's just black. I do see a red light, but that's it. Now, in order for the viewfinder to activate, you have to hit the red record button here. So now, I'm able to, oh, it's still starting up here. Uh, and now I can actually see that camera there. And it's, you know, it's not in record standby mode. It's just the viewfinder is now activated. In order to put the camera into uh, record standby mode, we're gonna hit this record button and then play button at the same time. It didn't do it yet, but you'll know when I do it when you hear the tape. You can see the tape rolling here. So now the camera is ready to go, but there's one last step. So I have the camera, I can see the viewfinder. The last step, if you wanna start recording, is this button right here. It's uh, you know similar to regular cameras now. You hit that and it begins recording. And now I have it on my shoulder and it's just, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy. Now, if you wanna stop recording, you're gonna hit that you're gonna hit that orange button again. And the tape has stopped. The cool thing though, like I said before, I can hit stop now. <laughs> and then I can hit, uh, yeah, I can hit play. <laughs> Still getting ready here. And I'm gonna rewind that so I can see what I captured. So I'm gonna hold that down. Another way to do it is to just hit stop and it'll rewind a lot faster. If you guys had VCRs back in the day, then you know what I mean. So that's how it looks like in the viewfinder. Let me zoom in here. Again, there's no sound, but <laughs> all black and white. What I'm gonna do is attach the headphones and see if I could actually hear the sound when I play it back. Got my headphones here. I'm gonna plug it into the earphone jack. Oh, wow. I can hear it. So yeah, you can in fact hear the sound while you're playing it back. Cool. 
So what I wanna do now is put it into record standby mode again and just see if, oh yeah, I can. Yeah, oh, it blew out and I can't hear anymore. Okay, so it seems like the mic, if I talk too loud, is too sensitive. So if I do talk too loud, it cuts out, but then it slowly comes back in. So let me talk about some of these different options we have on the side of the camera here. So the first thing you notice is the filter over on the left. So you notice the sun here and a light bulb. So if you wanna shoot outdoors in daylight, you probably wanna have it set in the upward position. And then when you're indoors, you have a different lighting situation. So you might wanna flip that in the downward position. Now over on the white balance, so if you have it set to standard, it's gonna sort of guess and pick and choose how the white balance should be set. But then if you wanna manually adjust the white balance each time you shoot a different scene, you could flip it down in the adjusted setting and then point the camera at something white while holding this down for a few seconds, it'll adjust the white balance setting. Now the sensitivity option here, if you are in ideal lighting situations, you wanna have it set to standard. If you have like very low light, say you're outdoors, you could flip it up and it'll brighten up the shot a little bit. However, you're gonna lose quality on there. This is a cool feature. So what you can do is close the iris and uh, you know get it to look dark or you can brighten it up and make it really bright. Another cool thing here is, so you can manually transition and fade to black from the camera itself. How cool is that? <laughs> now we could do it right on you know video editing software, but here you could do it, it's built into the camera, but you have to manually adjust it with your finger. So what I wanna do next is get some test shots so you have an idea of what kind of picture quality this camera was capable of back in 1984. So. Um, what I want to do is adjust some of these settings here so you get an idea on what happens when you adjust them. So let me start recording here. I forgot to say this before, but there is a zoom here. So uh, you can hold that down and it'll start zooming in. So that's the slow way of doing it. Notice it's going out of focus. So I'm trying to do a manual focus, but I can't because it's too zoomed in. Let me zoom out a little bit and that should look a lot better here. Awesome. So remember I said, uh, yeah, if you wanna focus on things, you wanna zoom in all the way, but apparently this is way too close. So there is two ways of zooming, that one here I showed you, but then you also could just do quick zooms by doing that. Now also on the lens, you can do macro shots. So to put it in macro mode, you wanna hold that button down and then move this over. Now it's locked into macro. So let me see if I get a nice macro of this lens. There it goes. So I'm pretty close up here, so I can get close up. I'm probably a little too close. That's a little better. Awesome, that looks good. So right now I have the camera set with the sun setting. So let's see what happens if I put it in the light setting. Looks like it brightened it up a little bit. The colors might have changed slightly, but I can't tell. Again, it's black and white. Let me flip it back to sunlight. And, uh, didn't really notice any apparent changes there. So the next thing I wanna do is try the white balance. Right now I have it standard, so it should adjust it all by itself automatically. Let me put it into adjusted mode and adjust it myself. And then what I'm gonna do is hold down that adjustment button that I showed you earlier here for a few seconds. One, two, three, apparently it's done. Now, right now I have the sensitivity set to standard. Let's see what happens if I bring that up. Looks like it switched, uh, did something. It might have gotten a little grainy. Let me put it back to normal. Put the sensitivity back up. But yeah, it looks like it's getting a slightly grainier. Now I have it back into standard. Now here's the iris. Let me show you how cool this is. So I could bring it all the way up. It's gonna make it really bright or I could fade it all the way out to black. Kind of like a dissolve, you know what I mean? Like in video editing, that'd be like uh, a transition that you would use. You could fade to black or you could fade back into your shot like that. Pretty cool stuff. So what I want to do now is show some test footage that I captured with the camera. Right now I can't even tell if it's focused on me or if I'm even in the shot or if it's too zoomed in. But I want to share some test shots that I captured with this camera so you have a better idea of what's capable with it. 
Uh, I'll put some nice music to it so it's a little more enjoyable. And it's getting kind of windy, so that'll be a nice test to see how well that mic works there. And then we'll come back and I'll talk a little bit more about the camera. So what do you think about the quality of this camera? I mean, to be honest, 1984, that was probably a really good quality, uh, and especially something that you could you know, use at home at this size, and you just had the opportunity to capture your own home movies now, or even make your own movies. Um, so there were some details that I missed out in the beginning, so I wanna kinda cover those again. So again, this camera uses VHSC, so you're able to record up to 30 minutes of content on the tape, and of course, if you want to, you can rewind the tape and re-record over that as almost as many times as you want, but over time, it's gonna get probably screwy, and then you probably need to get some more tapes. The battery life, so apparently the battery life is 45 minutes, and that's still true, but again, I did say that this battery was like rebuilt, so I don't know what was done, but I get about 45 minutes out of it. Now, there was one accessory that I forgot to mention earlier, another accessory that you get for this. If you notice on the camera, you do have another port here, and it says remote, so you can actually get a remote control for this. It wasn't wireless, it was actually a cable that you had to connect into it, and um, I don't know how long exactly that cable was, but with that remote control, you were able to start recording and stop recording, and that's it. That's all you could do. You can do anything else. Now, the last thing I want to show you is how to get your footage from this type of camera to your computer. So I bought this adapter here that has a USB cable, and it has the composite cables here, as well as S-Video. So what that's going to allow us to do is connect up the correct cables to the JVC GRC1. So I'm gonna get that connected and then plug it into my computer and then start a capture so I can show you how simple that is. So when you buy this adapter, it comes with the drivers as well as the software, which is called ArcSoft Showbiz. You get a full license. And um, let me go into capture mode. You can probably see that on that camera here. So what I'm gonna do is hit play on the camera. We should hear some audio. And what I'm going to do is hit capture. So it's going to capture that right Just now. Capture with this camera so, you have so now it has started capturing. I'll let it go on for like 15 seconds, 10 seconds. So now if we go and watch it back, there it is. Awesome. So what do you guys think of the JVC GRC1U camera? I think it's pretty crazy to think back that home movie cameras like this existed and people use them and you know coming to today things have advanced so much the quality the way that they operate you know the operation is similar but there's obviously major differences we have it so easy today but but just thinking back how people use this type of camera to capture their families or you know vacations or whatnot um, it's kind of cool to think back that people actually did that back then and they did it for themselves and they weren't even really able to share it with other people around the world I did see something funny though in uh, a JVC um, tutorial guide where they were mailing physical tapes in the mail to their grandmother so that they could share you know what they did on their family trip or whatnot it's kind of insane to think now we could instantly share content right from our smartphones but it's kind of cool to think back and uh, use this kind of camera so what made me really want to get this camera though is because I love the back to the future movies I've seen it so many times and I always said that camera looks really cool and I'd love to play around with it one day and then I was watching back to the future again a few weeks ago and the idea sparked again 
why don't I actually just go on the internet and find one and see if I can get it in my hands in working order. And 200 bucks and it's working, it's, it's awesome to have. I then started to think maybe I should test out some other older cameras like a Super 8 and see what the process is like to capture it and uh, getting it onto a computer and just playing around with old stuff is kind of cool. So um, uh, this is just a, a little side thing I want to do on this channel. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any other comments or questions about this camera. If you want, hit the like button. Yeah, I think that's it. I'll check you out in the next video. Bye.